Welcome back to Television as Furniture. Uh, today we are um, uh, uh, very lucky to be speaking to, uh, uh, I'm going to say, the producer and uh, MC, at least for the last couple, um, uh, of um, uh, uh, the uh, classical and chamber uh, music uh, project that runs out of La Mama um, annually, I think, uh, Miranda Hill. Um, oh, did I mention that that was homophonic, that that's the project? I don't know that I did, but I just did then. Uh, Miranda, welcome to Television as Furniture. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Ah, a pleasure. Um, so, um, uh, I'm going to just jump straight into it because uh, 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 I, I'm aware of homophonic from, I've been aware of it for the last couple of years. I haven't managed to get to uh, anything um, in the last few years, largely because uh, we've been locked down and kept away from everything um, and various reasons before that. But um, it's a, it, it, it's, it always it strikes me as, uh, as being a, um, a, a fantastic project. Um, and I'm curious about how it got started. I think, is it, is it 11 years old this year? 11 years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How did you guys start it back in the day? So, yeah, homophonic, it's a celebration of, of queer and uh, LGBTIQ+. Plus. I use queer as an umbrella term. Um, I, as a queer composers in the new classical genre. And 11 years ago, uh, I started it because you know, I'm, I'm super gay, right? Like I'm super, super gay. And all through my education, my music education, they started playing the violin when I was three. I went through all the channels. I played in all the orchestras and I was given these names to look up to. I was told to look up to Tchaikovsky and I was told to look up to Palunk and I'm and, um, told to look up to uh, Schubert and all of these other composers. But I was never told that I could also look up to them as a queer person mm -hmm. and they were pretty well straight washed within the canon if you dug it was there but it wasn't presented to us as a lineage of something that actually as queer artists we could also look up to and we were kind of part of that lineage to see how things have changed but also what we can do now and so I started homophonic to kind of undo that a little bit just to it started off as being a bit cheeky um but the first concert we only did one part of the Midsummer Festival and it's it sold out and I'm like oh oh people want this um this actually there is a there's a connection here and you know the argument of course is of course you know that music is not known for being a particularly homophobic uh environment you know I personally I'm quite sure other people have I'm not belittling their experience in any way personally I haven't experienced it uh, in my day-to-day -day working in any way but at the same time it's not celebrated you know we talk about we never play Marlatan without talking about Alma his wife who was uh, unfaithful to him at the time but we always play Tchaikovsky I think it's Tchaikovsky's whoa, six I think it's six without um <laughs> without talking about the young man that he dedicated it to and then crossed that out and gave a different dedication. So it was about undoing that straight washing. And then also, you know, queer history is not passed down in the same way. And cultural history is not passed down around a multi-generational dinner table in the same way that other cultural histories are passed down. So if we want our cultural history to be passed down, we have to record it. We have to record it. We have to celebrate it. Uh, I also don't want anyone to straight wash me in my own biography when I'm dead. Like they didn't, they don't have a choice now after 11 years of homophonic. Hmm. That's a really <laughs> so that's interesting. the broad perspective of how we got here. Yeah, yeah. That's a really <laughs> interesting point, actually. Um, big, uh, oh, there's so much to, to dig into in that, but uh, I'm going to pick up on that last point of going, um, uh, given the contemporary environment, do you feel like there would be a risk of being straight washed as a composer? For, you, for yourself? I mean, I'm not a composer, actually. Oh, uh, uh, as a performer, um, no, you're, a, you're, a, you're a violinist, right? I'm you're a double violinist, bass player. You're a bassist, yeah? Yes, double bass. Yeah. Um, I think it is still less, I might, this is my experience, actually, is because people say, what about this composer? And then I go to their website, and then I go to their Wikipedia, and I go to their IMDb, and I go to, and there's nothing mentioned there and then I dig a little bit and it's written on there they've performed at a concert of 
like a queer um, queer composers concert or you write to them person, they, personally and they go, oh gosh, I'd love to. But it's not kind of at the bottom of their bio very often, lives with their wife and three children in the same way, you know, their spouses still, their partners are still written less into uh, public knowledge and are still kind of discussed less. Not always, not always, but still, yeah. Does that reflect a kind of conservatism that's still hanging on in the um, classical, uh, contemporary classical music uh, community? Possibly. Mm. Yeah, I mean, possibly. It's hard to say. And that's it's obviously the individual choices, um, mm. you know, but I don't think it's less about, at this point, after 11 years, it's less about undoing that straight washing as it is now. It's just about celebrating what we have now mm. and the composers that are coming through now we've built some long-term compositional relationships as well um but we've moved into uh also commissioning we commission a lot we commission a lot by living uh living Australian composers I think personally through homophonic now I have commissioned uh 45 46 works Mm -hmm. um chamber and chamber and solo works so there's a lot there's a prior a, com a commissioning uh composition competition there's the respect commissioning project which is setting stories of queer elders into art song um and that's moving into video works this year so really cementing our kind of queer lineage and, and creating intergenerational and meaningful queer artistic relationships but mm -hmm. doing it deliberately not just by happenstance yeah yeah um so uh, the the works that you commissioned are they um obviously they're performed for the um for homophonic itself the performance but um do they tend to get a uh a, a, a longer life afterwards they're getting um kind of performed elsewhere or are they sort of one shots some of them are i mean the really hard thing classical music is pretty terrible at, at repeats of new music it's a problem within the genre um but we also do just play a lot of that music again right. um so you know going to composers what do you have that fits this kind of with this instrumentation and people suggest things which is nice a few works have gone on to have a uh, longer life and i'm currently in negotiations to um, get some publishing deals actually so that we can have that work be available to other um other performing groups around the world which would be amazing that would be terrific yeah uh, and likewise are these do you, uh, um hmm, uh, 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 have you i don't know whether but i guess um have you got a kind of uh recording and performance rights for them as well to be able to like uh sell cds i mean cds that made that dates me doesn't it <laughs> uh sell recorded versions of it uh we haven't done any um professional level recordings we've only done live recordings at this point it's on the list <laughs> the list is long yeah uh, 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 some of them I, I do, some of them I don't. It depends on the composer, the level of their, um, the level of, of their, if they have their own publishing house, then no, I don't have that. I don't have those rights, you know, and the younger composers, yes. So it kind of changes on a basis, but music is also a lot more flexible in that um, for better and for worse than I think theatre is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. there's... Uh, I mean, you get me started on talking about the publication rights and presentation, representation rights of Australian theatre, and, uh, and I'll never stop. Um, yeah. uh, so, uh, um, so uh, in 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 the past, it's been presented just uh, as as a um, uh, like as a chamber concert, as as uh, a, a recital, I should say. Um, uh, but obviously, because of uh, COVID restrictions uh, this year, it's um, quite different. And I'm really interested in how uh, how you made the decisions around it, and um, how you're negotiating uh, the audience in relation to the performers, and what what you're hoping the experience for the audience will be yeah oh i'm really excited about it actually so you're correct homophonic is normally an extravaganza i have no self-restraint uh so very often it's 20 to 25 performers on the stage at the courthouse 
we've had a full gamelan orchestra. Last year we had a piano and a harpsichord. Um, and we just, we just cram that stage full of performers and then we oversell the house. Generally, it's we generally do four shows. They sell out in advance, which is amazing, um, including a relaxed performance for accessibility. And yeah, this year we've been really lucky, actually. The last two years we've snuck it in. We did January 2020, end of January, start of February 2020. We literally had the entire audience join us on stage for a mass singing meditation that we all did together. Amazing. <laughs> right, which was a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. And it is unfathomable now to invite 100 people to stand together on the La Mama stage and sing together. But that's what we did. Mm -hmm. um, and last year we snuck it in as well. It was the festival moved. So it was in April and it was in that lull. We just got in there in that lull and we did the full show, which was so heartwarming to be back in that space. Um, just quickly, fascinatingly, though, that one, I think five of the eight pieces were commissions that year. And so they were all written in 2020, 2021. And it was this really relaxing concert. Everyone wanted, everything was expansive. Everything had space. And it's, I think we were all in that same headspace. We wanted to be soothed. You know, we wanted to be eased back into the theatre. Um, nothing was aggressive in any way. So that was an interesting side note of, of that. So this year, it doesn't feel safe to do that, to do that, because it is, you've been in the courthouse, you're sitting cheek by jowl. Uh, oh. It's a beautiful, intimate, communal sort of space. And, you know, I'm not sitting inside a coffee shop to have a coffee at the moment. So I don't feel comfortable as a producer and as an artistic director, inviting my friends and my broader artistic community to do that, to pay to sit cheek by jowl with people they, they who are not their, not their community. And the idea of, because homophonic is such a massive, over the top, everyone's wearing sequins and it's all various, lots of laughing and lots of silliness and it's a lot of fun. And the thought of doing a watered down version with half audiences and less people, it just, it wasn't homophonic. And so I started thinking about what can we do, what parts of homophonic do I want to keep? If I can't do the big show, we can't do the extravaganza, what is, what is at the heart of homophonic? And the answer to that is community. The community that's created between the performers, because we've been playing together for so long, between the performers and the audience, because we, have a, we do have a cult following. People come every year and they get to know our performers and they get to know us. So between that, but then also that community, you know, the queer community is so strong. Uh, the musical community is so strong. La Mama is a community within and of itself. Oh, yeah. Anyone who went to the Bank Banksia Festival, that was very clear. Um, and so we I came up on the idea of, of bring your own bubble. Bring your own bubble. So each show, instead of the two hour long, two hour long extravaganzas, they're half hour performances with only two performers. Uh, so very small, very different to the regular homophonic. There's only one booking per show. So you bring your bubble, mm. you bring your community. And then therefore we're also celebrating them. Those people that got us through the last two years, the people you had Zoom drinks with every Tuesday, even when you didn't want to, the people who have walked your dog when you haven't been able to go outside for a week, uh, the people who've dropped off, who've chalked the front of your house when it was your birthday, um, you know, all of these, the people who snuck around to the back lane and had a drink at some point over the fence, you know, all of these people that have become so essential to us and they already were but now I feel we appreciate them in a different way so bring your bubble yeah, and yeah. it's a private theater it's a private concert just you just your bubble you guaranteed that you will not sit next to a stranger with a sniffle you know it's just uh -huh. you know everyone in the theater and you trust yeah. them how many uh can you bring how many can you have in that bubble 10 yeah okay cool uh, yeah so still quite small yeah, yeah. It's me yeah. thinking about who I would bring, right? Uh, <laughs> well, you better be quick. There's, un there's only three shows left. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, quickly. Well, I'm currently <laughs> desperately trying to get my own show written and it's, I've only got 15 days left to do it. So, there it is. Really, yeah. but fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, okay. So, um, 
so uh, uh, two people uh, or oh, two performers, so largely mm -hmm. duets, I would I would think. Yes, yeah, um, solo and duets. Yes, yeah, solo and duets. Uh, yeah. and, but it's the same, you have the same, um, uh, I was going to say cast, you have the same musicians usually over and over, you have the same band, basically. Uh, more or less. Yeah. More or less, it does change. There are a few people, actually, who are new to us who are playing this year, because I went to my core, my core group, and I said, do you want to do a duet, a duo set? You have free reign. Um, and some people have chosen from within now, and some people have brought new people into the fold, and I'm really excited to see um to see them I get to hear them all like three times each it's going to be amazing um oh, yeah. so but it is very much the same crew if you are a regular homophonic attendee you will recognize uh, a lot of the people who are performing and a lot of the people on the stage and also get to know them a little bit better because while I'm there I'll be there I'm not it's not going to be quite so much the Miranda show that uh that the homophonic normally is because I didn't choose this music you know, I handed over trust, uh, a little bit of curatorial to the duets themselves. What do they want to bring to the table? Yeah. You know, what have, what music have they been dying to play when they get back into performance? Because we've missed it so huh. much. Oh well, that's 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 really fascinating. This was a, I was almost going to ask this earlier, actually, uh, when we were talking about uh, how things got started and the amount of composers uh, who uh, were queer and have um, had that kind of erased. I was going to ask. Uh, my understanding is it's mostly contemporary um, works uh, that is presented by um, or that are written uh, uh, and performed by um, uh, contemporary queer composers and performers. Um, uh, but my instinct was to say, oh well, is it a mix of or has there been a mix of that plus also reviving some of those kind of works to be able to go this was a work by uh well take Tchaikovsky for example or I want to say Ben Britton but I'm not 100% certain definitely 100% um, Britton yes yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah uh, he's, both him and Tchaikovsky are on the problem they'd probably be cancelled if they were around today yeah, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah. yes um, Probably with good reason. Uh, I mean, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of those. Like the, the, the deeper you dig into the history and that sort of stuff, the more of them you go, oh, okay, they would be cancelled, they would be cancelled, which yeah. is, <laughs> highlights highlights a, something of a problem with um, cancel culture, but uh, is it's a problematic um, thing, right? That notion of the artist versus the art. And the further back we go into history, the easier it is to focus on the art and issue the problematic nature of the the, um, the artists themselves, of course. Mm -hmm. That's something of diversion, Rob. Um, uh, yes. so, yeah, my question was, um, is it always uh, contemporary stuff or do you actually bring in um, uh, more classical works as well? Within classical music, anything written after 1900 counts as contemporary. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, Algar counts as contemporary music to <laughs> the classical canon. <laughs> yeah. So we we have presented some Tchaikovsky, but I do believe we did dance the sugar plum fairies for two double basses and contrabassoons. So we haven't exactly gone for a traditional retelling of Tchaikovsky. Uh -huh. um, but we have played a lot, particularly that the American 50s, which was a golden era for queer arts um, across the board, ironically, because it was not a golden era to be queer in America. Um, but, you know, Copeland, uh, Barber, uh, John Cage, all of those sort of names. Um, we've played a lot of Ethel Smythe, who I don't know if you know of, but she's oh. a contemporary of um, Brahms. She's of that era and she was incredibly rich, which is why she was allowed to be out at the time. And she wrote these diaries, which have been published. And she is she is a piece of work and is hilariously funny. Um, but she like fell, falls in love with Virginia Woolf and she falls in love with Emmeline Pankhurst. And she <laughs> None of it is requited, but she writes all about it. It's phenomenal. That immediately makes me want to suggest that there needs to be a, a work um, or, or a show that take that, that unite. This is the theatre maker in me going. Uh, I, want to, I want to take some of those diaries and, and have them performed alongside some of the music of the time as well. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that, it needs to be done. Let's let's talk after this. Yeah, let's. Um, but... <laughs> yeah, let's. Um, I need to I need to get a hand, my hands on the um, the diaries, but yes, let's absolutely talk about that. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we do we do play the more established works as well, and I do believe in this program there's some Ronaldo Hahn, some um, 
Uh, there is some Britain, some of the Britain cello sonata, I do believe, which uh -huh. is going to be stunning. Campbell Banks is playing uh, some of the Britain. Uh, not the whole thing, because we've only got a half hour concert, but that's going to be a really stunning, uh, particularly as, a, as an intimate um, and exclusive concert, to be able to have that connection. And you asked earlier what I want the audience to get out of this, and I want it to feel, that's why I'm so excited about it, is I really think that it's going to feel exclusive. You know, because you will be able to talk back. <laughs> you know, you can ask a question and you can answer. It's going to be that sort of, it's it's a bit more conversational. Um, and I also really hope that it feels safe for both the audiences and the performers and that it feels that, because, you know, I don't know, I'm still a bit anxious. My anxiety levels about all of this is still quite high. And when I feel like that, I can't relax. And when I can't relax, I can't listen. Yeah. And one of my big, one of my most influential professors taught me that if people, if an audience can laugh, then an audience can listen. And I'm like, all right, interesting. It. Yeah, it's a really interesting. If you can bring them to that place of comfort, then they can truly listen. Yeah. And that's what we're aiming for a space in which, after I don't even want to think how long of not, of being a little bit on edge, finding a space in which we can listen to allow yourself to be transported to allow yourself to go into this sound world uh and experience there's going to be some you know some great joys and some really sad music and some difficult music and some exploratory music and it's all in there there is definitely some deeply sad music um mm -hmm. that's that i know is being performed as well as some really joyous there's one that's about the experience of lying on the grass and looking up at the sun through the daisies you know, um, <laughs> is it the same program each time or is it a different program depending on when you come in? Uh, it is a different. So each duo is performing three times mm -hmm. and each duo is doing their own program so that they are repeating that program three times. So if you have booked to see you, one of the lucky people who have already booked to see Kyla Matsura Miller and uh, Brandon Lee on violin and Koto, um, which is going to be out just outstanding in that space. Uh, that's thoroughly sold out, I'm afraid. Um, is, <laughs> that will be the same program three times. Yeah. Um, but because there are 24 concerts and eight different duos, there's going there's a fair chance that uh if you didn't come more than once you would definitely hear something different yeah yeah okay yeah. okay great um all right well once again i've already turned a 10 minute interview into a half hour so um i i, I should oh, i'm probably... terrible at that oh, no, i'm the no, no, it's absolutely <laughs> i'm the interviewer i'm the one who's supposed to be in control of this thing but i just get into it i'm like ah oh, let's talk <laughs> um, so i should thank you so much very much for your time um uh, i fingers crossed i managed to get us into uh <laughs> into a sh one of the shows um uh, but if not i presume there's always next year um always next year and the regional tour Oh, a regional tour. When's the regional tour happen? Yes, the regional tour is uh, to the five Victorian Pride Festivals. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah so that's a, that is featuring the, um, the Respect Project songs, uh, which is the works written about uh, regional queer elders and kind of redressing the balance in art and music of who is represented in those stories. Uh, and also this amazing a work that was supposed to be at the big show because of course I'd done all my commissioning and we'd commissioned these massive works that we can't do we're going to do them next year um but uh Sally Whitwell who's a ARIA ARIA award-winning pianist and composer has uh written a series of very short like little 40 second works for voices and strings of the pandemic alphabet and that she's written Drew and some of some of them are hilarious some of them are very poignant some of them get a bit sweary uh but they, <laughs> but they're so they're so perfect for now so they will be turning up on the regional tour if you keep an eye out for that but otherwise next well get in now if you want to book and otherwise next year back at La Mama Midsummer Festival <laughs> Well, it, it it sounds fantastic. It always sounds fantastic, and I think the um, the the new approach to it for this year also sounds amazing. So uh, I encourage anyone who's watching um, television furniture at the moment, any of my say 
I don't know, 200 subscribers. Um, if you're not already booked, which I'm sure a lot of you already are, book in quick, but don't book in too quick because I still want to get my, <laughs> my tickets as a, as a way. There is the statement though, if you book for four people and then someone such as yourself goes, God, I missed out, I want to come. You can call up La Mama and you can add more tickets. Ah, uh, okay. Up to 10. So if you book for four, then you can add up to 10 by calling up La Mama and changing your ticket booking. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Um, <laughs> Miranda Hill, thank you so much for joining us here on Television Furniture. I, th I think it sounds amazing and, and, and fingers crossed, I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you.